Good day, folks. And we got Dr. Terry and Tom here with the Metaphysical Mysteries. You ever thought about channeling? Do you know what it is? Well, we're going to find out. We have an excellent channeler here, Tara Arnold. She comes from the province of Nova Scotia up north in Canada. And we're really happy to have her. And she's, you know, you can see her on YouTube and she's going to talk more about herself. But keep in mind, one of the focuses she does is on St. Germain. And for those who don't know who St. Germain is, I guess you could look it up, but uh, it's uh, many different uh, supposed uh, past lives that you would know. But uh, he is an ascended master, uh, the seventh ray, the, the Kohan of the seventh ray, which is a lord. And, uh, you know, rather than me tell you, we'll kind of dig in here. And Tara, why don't you tell us all about yourself and how you came to be a channel? Okay. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show, Terry and Tom. Nice to see you. And um, yeah, so the channeling started like as a child, I received messages from my spirit guides, but they talked um, outside of me then. So I heard them as if they were standing beside me. And now when I channel, they bring in light language through my crown chakra and my brain translates it into English. So as a child, I'd receive messages. And then in my 20s, I get, you know, into my ego and into um, nursing career. And I went, you know, totally in 3D. And um, I had an injury in nursing. So that led me into going back to school, taking natural therapy courses and energy healing courses and all those energy healing courses opened me up and they started bringing in messages to give to my clients. And so um, eventually I came across trans channeling and I thought it looked fun. And I asked like, how can I be in service? And I practiced um, trans channeling a few times and it didn't seem to work. I would, my body would shake um, a bit. I didn't know at the time, but they were just clearing out chakras. And so that's how it kind of went for a bit. And one day I was like, I attempted to automatic write and it felt, I felt resistance. And then all of a sudden I, I asked, why is this not working? And then some energy shot through the top of my head. It kind of felt like lightning coming through and then it shot out of every chakra and then after that I was able to uh, go into trance I just didn't realize I was going into trance so it took a while after that to realize that um, like every time I shut my eyes it's like all this white light coming in and my body would start shaking and then one day Saint Germain just came in and he introduced himself and he's like I want you to speak and uh then he started training me so at first because the ascended masters their energies are so big it's um they've been on the planet earth and they have ascended to um higher dimensions where they um their energy is quite large so it takes a little while for the physical body to adjust but everybody can channel and um here today to to tell everybody that's interested in it or that has like a passion for it that you'd be really good at it and I teach a course where Saint Germain I actually channel him as he teaches people how to channel and even if somebody didn't want to channel the ascended masters he'll teach them how to channel whoever they wish to to channel so if it's a spirit guide that crossed over or another spirit guide that they want to work with then he He'll show them how they're going to connect with them. Okay, sounds sounds interesting for for the listeners who say oh, this stuff is all BS. Terry, Tom, how do you how do you deal with this? You know, and uh, I, I get a kick out of it because you know there is some science to this, and people have been hooked up at you know to all the electronic devices, so we know we're getting information outside of your body, and quite frankly, you're getting information. There's no way you could possibly know, no matter what. Right. And, and I do feel a little bit for people who are like um, beginners in a way, because, you know, there's nobody standing right there typically to mentor them. It sounds as though like you almost had to be mentored uh, by the ascended master himself uh, to kind of get you there. Did you have somebody else, you know, a mother, or father, grandmother, I don't know, anybody in the family who had any kind of sense about what was happening to you? Um, well, no, my family's quite Catholic, so they're not into this channeling thing, but I have a very supportive husband, so he um, he kind of helped me through it, and now he's become intuitive because the 
you know, the more we expand um, our consciousness, then everyone around you begins to expand as well. So he's he's quite intuitive now, too, and receives messages as well. You know, uh, when I see people who are trying to give psychic messages, one of the tough things that they come across as far as hurdles is, hey, can I really trust myself when I give them this information? You know, and there's really no good way to test it until you do it. Uh, and you have to do it under conditions that are giving you what you want. However, with channeling, it's a little, it feels a little different version of that because, you know, things are coming through that you wouldn't normally say, and you kind of just let it all hang out a little easier, it seems. Um, how'd you get over that, you know, as you first began? Um, I, it's trusting your knowing. So with Ascended Masters, they're, they're saying that, if you trust your knowing 100%, because everybody has a different truth. So everybody's going to channel a different truth depending on where they're vibration, like where they're vibrating. So if you're channeling fear, you're channeling the ego consciousness. If there's no fear in it, you're channeling the heart centered consciousness. So he just taught me, he's like, when you doubt, we have to pull back because you have to be the vibrational frequency of like to match ours and we don't doubt so you have to stop doubting once you can channel your own truth we will join you but if you're going to doubt or question then we pull back so it's it's knowing your own truth and not questioning it and then you'll feel them stronger um it's like trusting your intuition and and the ego likes to come in and tell us you know not to trust it but um so i just stopped doubting and as soon as i stopped doubting it's it's like they just slammed in like i could feel them um, their energies so easily even if I say like I channel something and it triggers somebody you still it's like you still can't doubt because as soon as you doubt there could be a reason like maybe that person was carrying around a vibration of um, an emotion of hate for 400 lifetimes and every lifetime they're like I'm going to bring it to the surface and I'm going to transmute it back to love in this lifetime and yeah. they just can't get it so their spirit brings it to the surface and their ego hangs on to it. it. It like attaches it to it. And so the Ascended Masters are like, we're going to have so you say something to trigger them to bring it to the surface so that we can come through and transmute it. So it's not questioning anything. And a lot of people will get to that point. They're like, well, it just didn't really sound like the message or it, it you know, they start to doubt and then the ego likes to just feed off that. So it's, it's yeah, not doubting is, is the number one step. Well, you know, fortunately, we have a doubting Thomas right here on the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say that kidding, but uh, but Tom Tom's been told he has a lot of Saint Germain hanging around him. Uh, Tommy, you got any questions? Maybe, hey, this might be your uh, your big breakthrough moment. <laughs> it could be. I think uh, one of the things, maybe for the listener, if we could just flesh it out a little more. Tom, you mentioned you know your own truth. So, what specifically yes. do you mean? by that the people so they could understand it okay so if you're vibrating in fear like if you have fears of spirits outside of you that are like ghosts and so you'll start channeling that that's your truth you're channeling your fear but if you say okay i'm gonna go and just channel from my heart and begin to channel um you know from the heart without judgment without fear and you begin to channel that way, it's your truth. And your truth is going to be different than everyone else's based on your life experience, based on your upbringing, based on your past lifetimes, based on your education, your, your knowing, your the vocabulary you use. So everyone's truth is going to be a little bit different um, based on all those things. So it's knowing and trusting your truth. And that's why the Ascended Masters, when they channel, they're like, whatever Tara channels, we want you to question. We want you to ask, is this my truth? And if that resonates with you, then yes, that's your truth. If it doesn't resonate with you, it's not your truth. So every channel that you listen to, they like it when you ask, like, oh, does that resonate with me? Because you'll notice on your path, as you've been expanding your consciousness, both of you, there's a lot of channelers you might have listened to like 10 years ago, but they no longer resonate with you anymore because you've expanded your consciousness. So your truth has changed. So where you're vi vibrating at, it continues to unfold. And so um, 
as you're channeling different ascended masters or uh, angels or um, archangels or you know just the universe you'll you'll channel in different um different messages based on where you're vibrating at you'll attract different spirit guides and the guides tell me like you choose us it's your reality not ours so who do you want who do you want to channel who do you want to pick as friends on planet earth well who do you want to pick as friends for your spirit guides because if you're heart centered you can channel anyone but if you're fear-based, you're going to channel ego consciousness. All you do is tap into the ego consciousness and start pulling in more fear. So if you if you have heart-centered intention, then you can channel anyone that you desire. If you don't resonate with spirit guides because you just want to channel universal energy, God, source energy, whatever you want to call it, then you don't have to have an identity um, I like friends, so I decided to, you know, join friends from the spirit world, but you can channel like Eckhart Tolle, he channels universe, universal knowledge uh, without putting an identity to it. Yeah, I think and, that's the challenge is how do you know if you're the person that's doing it? Uh, how do you know about the personality? When does somebody step forward and go, hey, I am so-and-so? Um, and how do you hear that? you know, in that respect, you get a okay. sense of it or do they just absolutely step forward and just give you an identity? Okay. So the universe is always showing you a reflection of where you are. So the, the guides that you are drawn to. So if you, if they, you come across them in a book or they keep showing up every time you go on to YouTube, there's another, you know, channeled message right in front of you of a certain guide. They're trying to get your attention and saying, you match my vibration. And, and you have to call them in because they're all just standing there waiting. So they're like, if, if recognizing, so my thing is, um, if I see it more than three times. So if I see something three times, so you know, with St. Germain, I'd come across books of him every time I went to chapters, there would just be a random book of him laying there. And then I came across him on the internet and on YouTube and different articles. So who's showing up in your reality? And then it's not doubting that. See, that's where they, they're saying, if you don't doubt that, we can show you more. Then they'll start, you know, you might see a vision of them outside of you. You, it, it, but if you doubt it, if you're not trusting your own truth and your own knowing, they will not connect because they're like the the whole like experience of being on planet Earth is remembering that you are everything. You are all energy. If you are all energy, what there is there to fear? Because even something that like if somebody says, well, you know, I don't want to connect with something fear-based like a ghost or, or something that scares me. Um, you are everything. You are all energy. What do you need a bubble of protection from? They're saying, because you are us, we are you. There's no separation. So if you already have the belief and the knowing that everything is energy frequency and you're connected to that energy frequency, then anything is possible. Okay. You know, uh, on the show, we, we have a lot of folks that do, you know, psychic stuff, mediumship and so forth. And yours, you're into the teaching of it all um, mm -hmm. to people. And so now we're going to, we would love to do a little demo. However, before we do any of that, unless any of your people just happen to dive in on us here, that's, that's fine too. <laughs> We have other people who want to get in on the conversation. That's cool. Um, but if you to say to a brand new student of yours, hey, let's break this down real simple. Step one's this, step two's this, and step three is this. What would you say the first three steps? I'm a brand new student. I want to learn how to channel. Step one, what is it? Um, just trusting your intuition and looking, start looking as everything that's happening outside of you as a message. So if a bird flies into your window, what's the message? What's bird totem? Like Google it. What's the bird totem message? What, what if when, you know, it hit the window and then died? Like, what's that mean? Like everything is a message. Or if you're driving to work and a deer runs across the, the road in front of you, look up deer animal totem. There's a message from your spirit guides. Or if you keep seeing numbers and synchronicity, look up the angel number for that or what that means. Um, and then it's everything becomes a message because everything is, it's like we're, we're projecting a hologram. We're, we're projecting energy in front of us 
as a reflection of where we're vibrating at. And there's messages that the spirit guides are giving all the time that people aren't recognizing as messages. Like if, um, you know, it's, like i mean there's so many signs like everything i get, I get it I, you know yeah. for the funny ones we have you know because i teach also and right. so uh we had a gentleman uh great guy but he uh he showed up and he he was walking out of his house to come to a group thing and there was a chicken feather there and he brought it he goes this must mean something <laughs> so i said okay well let me check you know and these guys are hilarious and the, and they said, I won't give you the exact words because they had a they had a few uh, <laughs> few words in there. I, wanna, I don't want to really repeat too much, but they said that uh, sometimes a chicken feather is just a chicken feather, <laughs> and they were right. all laughing. I mean, a whole group were just laughing on the other side, and um, and I told him the whole thing. Sometimes a chicken feather is just a blanking chicken feather. chicken feather you know <laughs> like this but ultimately finally somebody sobered up a bit on the other side and said really we just want to make sure that he started to watch the signs the chicken feather didn't mean anything except the point the key point to it all was he's looking for signs now that's step one and you just said step one so i, I got to put that in context but you know, every time we see him now, you know, people will, they've given him chicken feathers now <laughs> for, for gifts and all kinds of stuff. Cause of course we had to make fun of him because that's the fun part of the whole deal. But uh, he, he really is starting to focus. So, so we get signs right. and then what's number two, what else we do? So when you are um, asking the universe for answers you're you're in a vibration of wanting and the vibration of wanting is a vibration of lack it vibrates really really low so some people get frustrated because they're saying well i'm asking but i'm not receiving answers so the universe wants you to ask the question and then go play and when you're in a high vibration they can drop the answer in but because like when you're first starting out you're not in a vibrational frequency because you still have doubts you still have questions that you're you know asking yourself like am i really receiving messages so you're, there's a lot of doubt in there but when you're in a high vibrational frequency of playing they're going to drop the answer in your head and you're going to have an aha moment that aha moment is going to be an awareness for you that you are actually channeling and that you received a message and that's how they, they start out it's like get in the high vibration but when you're first beginning the, you know, the ego's there, there's doubt and stuff. So that's the second step is to like really um, ask the question, go play, have fun, and you'll get the aha moment. Absolutely. And what, what would be number three after that? After three is just the not doubting, the trusting, mm -hmm. trusting your knowing and not not questioning it. If, if like St. Germain says, you have to be the vibration that we are in order to connect with us because it causes a separation. So if you're, if you're trusting 100% and not judging, so the judgment upon things, so if you judge anything, it puts you in the ego consciousness. If it's right, it's a judgment from the ego consciousness. If it's wrong, it's a judgment from the ego consciousness consciousness so you want to be in the middle of that with no judgment um if you get a message it's just observing but not saying well that's not not the right message or the wrong message because as soon as you say right or wrong it's going to take you back to the ego consciousness Absolutely. right in the middle of that yeah, is I, fifth I dimension um you know heart-centered consciousness that's where you're going to receive your answers you know i i know uh, this is kind of interesting because I look for certain signs in folks if I'm actually channeling for them or I'm getting messages that need to flow to them. But oftentimes, and I don't know if you have a particular sign that this may happen, but uh, my folks start crying and they'll, they'll literally, I mean, you can tell they're vibrating high, but they literally want to hold on to you and, and they just lose control to a great degree because I think they're hearing the truth and they're within your your zone here with all your uh, energy. I don't know if you have anything like that or or ever have. Yeah, yeah, they feel the 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 yeah what you're saying the truth and and sometimes you would be channeling um, something to release help them to release from their heart is what I'm getting. It's like yeah. you're help like channeling through healing frequencies and then it, it just transmutes in their heart chakra and they release by crying yeah absolutely 
Sounds sounds like fun. Tom, you got something? Yeah, Tara, how hard is it for people starting out to shift into that state where they can channel? Is it just a conscious choice or how much practice have you found people? Yeah. So, so with the course I teach, because they bring the, the Ascended Masters will channel through frequencies to to help to activate like the third eye and crown mm -hmm. and to connect the left and right brain. It's um you take the first pre-recorded course and then you know just practice it for like a month or so and then take the master class is what I call it like the play on words the master class with Saint Germain and then it takes about three weeks for them to integrate the like for the for you to integrate the frequencies that they bring through to to for the left and right brain to start like working together and then it's practice it is a lot of practice because every time you go to practice with them you feel their energy and at first it feels heavy your physical body has to adjust to the frequencies so at the beginning when you start to channel them it's going to feel like you're the one channeling at, because you can't go that deep until your physical body adjusts to their frequencies so the the more that you practice the more they, they can bring in. So it's sort of like when you take Reiki, the first level Reiki, it's like, you know, the bring in drops. And then the second one is like the tap turns on. And then the third one, it's like a fire hose. So each time your physical body is adjust to their frequencies, you can go a little bit deeper, but it, it, take, it does take practice. Some people are a few months, some people a few weeks. It just depends, yeah. Okay. And obviously you're well versed at it. Like today we're sitting here having this conversation. How quickly can you make the shift to channeling? Is it something, a protocol you follow, a procedure, or you just go, I need to channel and the switch gets flipped? Yeah, it just switches. Like a oh, great. Let's switch. <laughs> See what St. Germain has to say or somebody else that might come through. Uh, see if we can have a conversation. And, mm -hmm. um, and we don't mind interviewing other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they might mind us doing it i don't know but we usually have a good time okay so i'll channel saint germain do you have a specific question that you want to start with um you know let, uh, you know i always wanted to hear the confirmation of some of his past lives his experiences on earth because i've heard a lot as you know i think we and i mm -hmm. ch chatted a little bit about that yep um okay so the the aspect of i uh, that i channel of him is from the 17th century. Right. So Oh yes, welcome. I'm Saint Germain. Uh, we welcome you. Okay, I just have to go deeper. Just one second. They're telling me I wasn't grounded. Oh, yes, welcome. I am St. Germain. We welcome you. Tom and Terry, we welcome you. Oh, what an exciting day with you in it, we would say. What an excellent ah, podcast. This is fun. We are all here. We are having fun. We are having a good time. This is me showing you my past lifetime of uh, being St. Germain. We would gather on nights during the weekend on the weekend nights and do riddles around the table there was no tv there was no internet and there was no ah uh, there was no electronics we found entertainment in other ways we would dress up in our top hats and our suits and we would gather around the table and solve the riddles oh this is that we've had many lifetimes we would say we because there are many aspects of each person that unfolds into a new lifetime. We will give an example. How many lifetimes have we all had? We are all aspects of each other. What do you mean by this, Saint Germain? What do you mean? We mean that when you are creating your blueprint before incarnating to planet Earth, you choose different aspects. Sometimes you will choose other lifetimes from other people and you will put aspects of theirs into your blueprint and then you will create your reality based on that. It is like hmm, picking out different personalities or different types of oh, different types of energies all combine into one. 
You could take an aspect from Lincoln or an aspect from Benjamin Franklin and put that into your blueprint and then come to planet Earth and you have an aspect of them within you. This is what we are saying about past lifetimes. They are a combination. They are a combination of all of you. You are all one energy. There is no separation and it is a fun game to play and wear different costumes. Ah, oh, you are all the you are all the directors of your play and you are all the main characters in your play and you are all wearing costumes costumes of the human body with different aspects of each different aspects of each each time you come to play you play a different aspect you play a different role think of it as roles different roles that you play ah oh. yeah well i i like the games and i like the riddles uh, i had one pretty interesting <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to hear a riddle i'll give him a riddle um sure what walks on four legs in the morning walks on two legs during the day and walks on three legs in the evening It is, of course, a metaphor. Yes, I can try to find it here. I can't seem to find it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it is a, uh, a man, a human. Oh, a human? Four, when you crawl in the morning of your life on all fours. Two you walk with two legs during the day, which is mid midlife, and three in the evening, which is with a cane. So oh, <laughs> right, later. right, the, in the stages of life. Stages okay, of yeah. life, yeah, absolutely. That was a good one. So there you go. <laughs> That's a fun one. Anyway, all right, well, cool. Um, let's see. Let's talk about, um, you know, I will name a few. Uh, I'll name a few lives and see if any of these resonate at all um, that are attributed to Saint Germain. And uh, you, like you said, it's an aspect. It's not all of it. You know, it's not the same person every time. But uh, we had Christopher Columbus. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Sir Francis Bacon. Also, uh, Joseph, uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. Joseph, that father. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that and then uh, Merlin is supposed to be St. Germain as well. So I don't know, maybe we can get an answer on those. Those are purportedly out there. You'll, you'll be able to okay. find Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We would say the stories that you have on Merlin are incorrect. They are not what I experienced as Merlin. It was more of a a guide of wisdom, a guide of Ah, oh, I was a guide. I was a guide in that lifetime. I was a guide. Ah, oh, the other lifetimes, there was aspects in those lifetimes. Joseph. Ah, oh, the, the stories of Joseph. I was an aspect of the stories of Joseph. I was an aspect of Christopher Columbus. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's he's not really saying much. He's like, this isn't, he's just saying that it's not relevant or it's not. That's a pretty, it, pretty it, yes, I, I agree. I agree. Or important or something. Yes, I, I understand. Um, so, well, Tom gets this thing about St. Germain being around him. Perhaps uh, he can confirm or tell us what that means, or maybe, maybe he got inappropriate information or something. Tom, do you have a, a specific question about it? Sure. Um... How can I phrase this? Um, what is his connection to my life and purpose? Okay. 
if any. Oh yes, welcome. I'm Saint Germain. We welcome you. We would say that we are ah. Oh. I am a guide. I'm a guide. I am here to assist. I am here to assist you, Tom. If you are open to channeling, I am here. I am here if you choose to channel me. I am here if you choose to work with me as a teacher, as a guide, as ah, to assist in your work and to assist in your Uh, on your journey it is up to you it, you are a vibrational match to our frequencies this is not only me it is all the ascended masters what do you wish to do what do you wish where do you wish to play who do you choose to play with we are here and we are ready when you are ready ah oh, so he's he's saying that if you'd like to channel him then he's open to okay channeling him okay. very cool um, anything in particular, you know, you said anything I want to do, is there something I'm supposed to be doing? Let's put it that phrase. Cause I've heard many different things for purpose. Okay. Oh, we are showing your channel, a teacher, a teacher of truth, a teacher of truth. And we are showing our channel to ask yourself, ask yourself, how did you like to play as a child? What did you like to do as a child? see yourself as a five-year-old what did you like to play when you were with your friends where did you enjoy what does the inner child want to do with this journey that is your answer you will find it there what the inner child wants to teach what how the inner child wants to teach how the inner child wants to experience life ah this is your clue did you like books if you liked books you were a great writer if you liked to teach others did you like teaching others then you're a great teacher this is your clue from your inner child he will guide you and let you know what your purpose is what your purpose is is through the eyes of the the child what does the child want to do this will bring you joy to your heart as you teach as you channel as you work with us could it be more than one thing oh we are showing our channel it is more than one thing that would excite the soul because you were vastly expanded in many areas this would be we're shown our channel teaching to begin, but it may unfold into more than that based on where you wish to play. Oh, go with what is comfortable to begin with, and then we will show you more. We will bring in more. Oh, okay. okay. Very good. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, run across or... Let me put it this way. The ascended masters, a lot of people don't know what an ascended master is, but I'll paraphrase it for the listener and to say it's somebody who's, you know, become completely, I guess, enlightened, uh, has spent time on earth and uh, may come back, may not come back. It's, and they will work towards the good of mankind by channeling energies through to people, whether they're conscious of it or not, generally speaking. Um Let's talk about Ascended Masters. Are there, and he probably, you know, won't give us a specific answer, I doubt, but uh, what number of Ascended Masters could we expect that would be on the earth and incarnate at this time? And are there any that any of the three of us would personally know? Okay. Oh, once one ascends, they do not return to planet earth. They this is in your books that they do, but we would say they do not. They are not coming back to planet Earth once they have ascended. It is not in your books. We would say that we are all here. There are thousands. There are thousands of us all working, but we are not working in physical form onto the planet. We are working as guides on 
from spirit. We are working with those who chose to incarnate on planet Earth. Once one has ascended, they are not returning. Oh. Um, what would be a, for people who aren't of the Christian faith, perhaps maybe a Buddhist, what would be the difference between an ascended master and what we would call a Buddha? So based on uh, the upbringing is how they show me. It's like, so if my upbringing was, um, if I grew up in um, India, then I would have started channeling Buddha right at the beginning. And then because I was grown, I grew up Christian, my inner child was more, felt more safe with like Jesus. And so it's just based on where you're vibrating at based on you're socially conditioned here yeah right. yeah and then that's what who would step forward first but now i like buddha will come in as well um many channelers talk about a particular group of ascended souls so to speak that they channel uh you know folks that get into it deeply understand it's all universal energy but they tend to uh display themselves in groups have you noted that that is the case as it relates to saint germain and and friends so to speak okay oh yes welcome i'm saint germain we would say that those who have chose to work in groups enjoy hanging out with groups it is all their perception who and where am I wanting to play? Who do I want to play with? And that's what you'll create in your reality. If you are a vibrational match and you are wanting to connect with groups, then that is what you'll cre create. There are many people on planet Earth that feel more comfortable in groups. Uh, some feel more comfortable in with individuals and you will notice that they will channel individuals but those who are more comfortable in groups will begin channeling groups. It is based on their vibration of what their preferences of what and where and what they wish to play, where they wish to play. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about future items, perhaps. Um, a lot of people are concerned about the future of the earth itself. And uh, I'm not one of those, but I will say that a lot of people are concerned and playing in the fear game. Um, but if the uh, if Saint Germain would like to comment on the future of the Earth, I know it's on, within our control to do what we will. But as as we see it, um, will everything be to reassure somebody? Is everything going to be fine? A hundred or a thousand years out? Okay. Oh, yes, welcome. I'm Saint Germain. We would say that our, the planet Earth is in perfection as people on planet Earth are not recognizing this. They are judging it. And if they stop judging it, it could change. It could change for the better. It could unfold into a new way. It could unfold into a new truth. It could unfold into more peace. But it is the judgment put upon something as being wrong or right that is causing it to remain chaotic. There are wars going on at your planet and everyone is judging this as bad. If they change their judgment to not, if everyone on the planet at this moment changed their judgment to that everything was in perfection, then the war would cease. It would come to peace because it is the energy of the ego consciousness that is feeding the war. It is the same with the, the global warming, with all of the storms and disasters on the planet. It is that with each in each chakra, there are energies coming up from past lifetimes, past lifetimes of fears, coming up through the chakra systems. This is causing anxiety in many on the planet Earth and most on planet Earth. And these are causing a reflection of that back to all of you. If you do not fear these emotions as they came to the surface, but love them instead, they would transmute back to love and the waters would calm and the stores would calm, storms would calm. We would say that it is, everyone is as a collective has chosen what is being created on planet earth right now based on where they're vibrating at it will change 
it will change, but there will be many leaving the planet. There will be many that choose not to awaken, and there will be many that choose to leave the planet to have an instant awakening. There are many that will remain asleep in this lifetime, and as you are mm, wanting people to awaken with you, we would say that the wanting them to awaken with you is causing them to go deeper into the ego because it is causing them to causing them to be controlled and if you let go of the control and allow those to sleep instead of convincing them to awaken then they will choose their soul's path without interference oh mm -hmm. um yeah so he's showing me that it's like it depends on us and what we want as a collective consciousness and where we're going to vibrate at i would concur <laughs> fantastic well we you know we that's a pretty broad question um let's bring it down to like uh what individual stuff would be is there some and, and we make our own future we know that but is there anything that uh tom or terry should know i um, mean we're trying to reach out to a lot of people and make sure that they understand that this connection is possible um but is there anything we should know about ourselves and well while we do this in the process so we could uh, help others get there okay he has a specific message for your viewers so i can go right yeah. into that mm -hmm. um so he's just going to tap into their frequencies and because there's some people that um i don't know he's just showing me he has something okay. to say so sure yeah Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We welcome you all. We are showing our channel that this is a, hmm, it's a podcast for questions. Oh, this is excellent. We love questions. We love to look in and observe. We love to explore and we love to question. We are showing our channel that there are skeptics. Ah, this is a channel that there are skeptics that come and we love skeptics. This is that we are showing our channel. It is a fun game. There are two types of ego consciousness. One is an inferior fed ego and one is a superior fed ego. The inferior fed ego would have, um, we would say, an easier time believing. There is a Inferior fed ego would have an easier time uh, believing as many are empathic. They uh, would feel things. But for those who cannot feel, I do not know if I'm channeling. I do not know if I'm receiving messages because I cannot feel. I cannot feel the energy. And I am wondering why I, how can I receive messages? And how will I know it's true if I am skeptical? And we would say it is a vibrational frequency of the ego consciousness. In the mental body's consciousness, there is three there are three aspects of the ego consciousness there is the id the ego and the super ego the id is the impulse control it is the instant gratification and the ego is uh, a decision maker ah i am the ego and i am deciding i'm a great channel and then the super ego would say you are not a good channel it is the vibrational frequency between these two ego and super ego that is causing resistance it is as if they are allergic to each other or they are repelling each other's energy this would be if one is skeptic uh, one way to balance the energies of these would be to write on a piece of paper and do spiritual alchemy call me in i am saint germain and i will bring in the violet flame to assist you write the id ego and super ego on three piece, separate pieces of paper and hold them in your hand while you are in meditation command that your higher self and i saint germain uh, balance the energies for these three aspects of the mental body's consciousness that are causing the skepticism this would balance it and so that the ego doesn't argue when the ego tells you the stove is hot it is the super ego that is saying go ahead and touch it and see what happens this is what we are saying for those who are skeptical for those who are having a difficult time it is the energies of these two frequencies that are repelling each other once they are balanced and working in harmony there would not be so much skepticism there would not be so much arguing and it the mind would be calmer once the mind is calmer then they would these 
people would be able to receive messages more fluently, more, um, hmm, we would say that for those who cannot feel, uh, our channel is showing us that some people can't feel. So what if I can't feel how would I receive messages? And we would say that we will be giving you signs in your third eye. This will come in as a memory. Some people are saying, well, sometimes I am, huh, I am seeing something, but I'm not recognizing it as something in my third eye. I'm seeing it as a memory. And we would say that uh, some of you won't see it as a slideshow. This is the misconception. Ah, I'm going to see a slideshow and then I'm going to receive all these messages and I will know, um, that that is my truth but we will say it is more subtle than that we are showing you in very subtle frequencies because it is uh, the fun of the game of the spirit to mm, expand and mm, go on the journey you already know the end result you already know the finish there is no excitement for the spirit to get to the end result it is um, going through and exploring frequencies that is what you are here for to explore and expand your frequencies when you are playing with frequencies it is not being afraid to go to e either end of the frequencies when you have water that freezes to solid cold or it goes to extremes hots and boils it does not uh, resist either end of the polarity uh, stop resisting the polarities and see them as um, a frequency to observe and transmute instead when you have fears coming in that you are ch channeling or receiving messages from something fear-based observe this this is a past lifetime memory coming up to show you that you have fears around this once the fears are gone you will be able to um, receive messages of truth from the heart and not be afraid we will be showing you in um, smells and tastes and um, also in hearing if if you hear um, hmm, if you hear us we will come in in subtle frequencies uh, maybe a song we will drop a song in your head but you are not recognizing this as a message take note of this we are um, we are here and we are giving you messages all the time even if you're not empathic even if you cannot feel it even if you are skeptical we can still reach you it is a balancing of the energies and not doubting stop doubting and we can connect when you doubt it causes a separation from the universe uh you are all striving to bring the universe into one energy again and you do this by going in not outside of you ah oh, ah oh. hmm. Oh, so good. yeah, so the the frequencies are, or the sorry, I'm kind of out of it. Um, the frequencies like going in and and finding those within yourself, but they're going to come in really subtle for those people that are very skeptical. So I'm I'm just going to ask for myself here um, if he has a information because I think people would ask this if they had you right in front of them. So that's why I, I want to do that. Is I'll say, who is it that might vibrate or resonate with, with me currently at this level or timeline, you know, maybe from the Akashic record, something that we would understand, some notable person, is there something like that, that would resonate at the current time? I know it changes, you know, over time. Mm -hmm. For you to channel, you mean? Yeah, the channels with me, I mean, my, uh, with automatic writing, you know, with whatever, you know, information or healings or whatever the case may be b okay. okay oh okay they're showing me it's a guide you already know so just one second they're saying it's an archangel so it's like one that you're already um an archangel is what came in and they're showing me that when you go to channel him he's going to turn the your tilt your head to the left and you'll know it's him okay yeah i understand that one yeah i think uh, My, it, and of course i say i say archangels are not a uh personality in a, in a human sense it's more like a different face or energy of god of the creator if you will um, that's how I see archangels, um, you know, so you take Michael as an example, you know, with, with the justice, you know, comments, and then there's, you know, the other archangels are several, obviously, but I think it's almost like 
you know, you get a, uh, I use a mother, you get a mother face, you get a worker face, you get a wife face, you get a daughter face out of that, you get a sister face out of that. It's all the same person, but they have a different aspect that they're pushing forward at the time when they're interacting with you, the individual. Right. And I don't know if that is uh, correlated keep, with your experiences. I keep seeing Archangel Michael. Yeah. Like his, yeah. The, that would be um, so when Archangel Michael comes in, they said he's going to tilt your head to the left and then you're going to, it's going to help create the belief deeper. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, to, 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 to not question. Yeah. <laughs> not that you question because you already channel. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think, you know, and I will just tell people, you know, the listeners, Hey, you know, everybody does this slightly differently. Um, but sometimes it comes on very fast and you'll notice that Tara is speaking differently and much faster. And for those who are not viewing it on video, you know, she's swaying back and forth and that's a flow of energy from my interpretation of it, from what I've seen through many people who do that. And, uh, I think another way to get into this is automatic writing. You know, if you just sit with that, uh, and, and allow that flow to come through, that's a, that's a pretty good step and, and people do it the rest of their lives um but it's an easy way to start to get into it and just let that start to flow yes and the and when they they move your body sometimes it's um they're moving stuff through your chakras so mm -hmm. um just if you're yeah, you know if you're experiencing people, that not to be afraid of it or if you feel them as heavy and if you feel them as heavy not to be afraid of it right. so when they when they move my body they're saying that we're bringing through frequencies for somebody's chakra like so somebody maybe somebody's heart chakra and they have to move it to get it out like so it's like they just move move the body yeah Absolutely. sometimes they'll they'll have you like cough to release or you know belch or something so totally i get that well do you want to check the same thing for tom since he's sitting there staring <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I'm just listening and enjoying the show. Okay, so there's a specific, like, do you want me just to ask how? Sure. Yeah, if it's someone uh, so that, how St. Germain going to be connecting with you? Yeah, if it's he's the primary uh, connection or is there someone else or is there a team or, you know, what's appropriate? Okay. Oh, yes, welcome. I'm St. Germain. We would say it is I, St. Germain. Call me in. Command me. When you command me, I can connect easier because you become the frequency that I am. If you are commanding, you evoke the God within you to create your reality or you evoke the universe within you to create your reality. If you command, then your spirit is becomes part of it. You will raise your vibration. Ah, I will not doubt and I will command. When I command St. Germain, I will feel him. He will come in as chills and then I will feel him tilt my chin down i will feel his energy and i will not question this ah there are many coming in for you tom we are showing tara that they will be uh working with you individually there is another ah one moment there is another entity coming in one moment please okay so this one's tilting your head as well so uh, it's tilting to the left let me just see who it is it might not be so when they tilt my head to the left a lot of times it's somebody that that maybe i i don't channel or something so let me just see who that is is it and the, the, again that's an archangel <sighs> Oh, so he's saying that you're going to find out because they they want you to trust. So when the archangel com starts coming into your reality or somebody that you're drawn to already, you have to know it. And then he'll tilt your head um, or she, whichever aspect you're channeling, um, will tilt your head to the left. And then you'll know it's them. But then that's when they don't want you to doubt. And then they're going to connect stronger. So it's all about not doubting, like not questioning, just knowing. And then when St. Germain comes in, he's going to tilt your head down. So it's just like when you go to practice, that's how you'll know it's them. Okay. And then he's, yeah. And then it's going to. Yeah, I, I'll i say if people do get this, I oftentimes when I get a message, uh, at the very end of the message, 
uh, I would get a name. They'll like sign it like a signature when I get a message. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> hopefully we're getting that correctly because I hate to give messages that are not, you know, accurate. But and that's, uh, but I will say uh, occasionally, and so I want people to understand uh, this, these, some of these guys are hilarious, absolutely have a great sense of humor, fun to talk to. And, um, you know, but occasionally um, I will see, um, and I've had this before, I get this announcement. It's like, there's almost like a, a drum beat going da -da 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 -da, like this, you know, for me. And then it's like, ta-da, you know, they step out on stage and it's kind of funny. And, they'll, and sometimes they'll go, holy, holy. Uh, and then they have their name comes forward to speak with you. And because uh, um, I get a tendency to get a lot of angelics, um, you know, uh, what we would call archangels and so right. and that's that's a pretty it's dramatic and it's dramatic for a reason wants to get my attention uh but that that's awful fun and you can sit and you know uh even jesus uh you talked about being able to channel jesus from time to time uh but i just i want people to understand these entities uh energies you know they're all part of all of us because we're all one but they do have a great sense of humor and you just you know sometimes churches um i don't want to bash on churches that's not really what i'm trying to say but i'll say that they make really great beggars you know you just talked about command and i since i do a lot of exorcisms and things like that you know command is really important and rather than oh please 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 bring me a new bike for christmas or please 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 heal my what beloved one whoever it is um rather than commanding the descent of angels upon the loved one that's what you need to do to change the reality. And people have not been taught to do that. They've been socially conditioned to believe they're lower than low. They're right. centers of all sorts, and they don't deserve to be here. And if it wasn't for one man, at least from a Christian perspective, uh, you know, you wouldn't be allowed to be much more than an earthworm. And so that whole concept has not been very helpful for people to um, get their conscious level up high enough to do some of these things. And, and that's a sad state of affairs. I guess I could ask St. Germain, since we're having such a good time, or if you want to bring Jesus into the conversation, will that change their understanding? I guess it's going to be an individual basis from what I understand, but uh, boy, it sure would be nice that they understand that that was a construct of, of humans, you know, right. of, of control. So I don't know, maybe they have a comment or commentary on that. Okay. Oh, yes, welcome. I'm St. Germain. We would say that, oh, yes, Jesus is here. We're showing our channel that, oh, it would be an uh, in individual basis, as you mentioned. Will it change? Oh, will this change? St. Germain, will this change? And we would say that as the humanity awakens and expands their consciousness, their level of understanding will change. Their level of beliefs will change, but it is an individual, based individually on if the person would, wishes to awaken. Many are wanting to stay asleep at this time in order to um, assist in awakening others around them by being the trigger. Ah, oh, this is a, a role that is not to be ignored. This is a role that is important on planet Earth. And so if all awakened at once, then who is showing you a reflection of who you are? If you are being triggered, it is because there is an aspect of you that has not been transmuted back to love, and it is reflecting back to you. Uh, one moment, please. Our channel lost the question. Sorry, I lost the question. What was the <laughs> what was the question? Um, I think you got it. I think you got it. So you, you, I, I went. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah telling me that I went off went off on a deep end there a little bit. That's fine. That's what happens sometimes in the conversation. Well, let me ask you, we're get running out of time, but I want to go one more person and I want to get their take on, because a lot of people, we talked about social conditioning and they get scared. And so let's talk about 
what we would call uh, the devil or Satan or Lucifer. They have all these names. And we've done a podcast on hell, and I think it was fairly accurate uh, what it is and what it isn't. Um, and I, I think that people really like to know that. Is there, is there somebody there with a pitchfork and a red suit going to be poking you for eternity? Yes. Okay. That's a great question. Um, I, now I know, now remember your first question and, um, <laughs> it's okay. yeah, because the, the reason that they're saying that if you must see us as friends and as equals is so that they are the same vibration and then they can connect stronger. So yeah, the uh, importance thing. Okay. So, um, once you see them as equal, when you start channeling, then the ego is going to get upset because it can't make you inferior anymore. And it's going to come around another way and say, now that you're channeling these ascended masters, then now you're more important. And when that happens, they pull back to show you that your ego snuck in another way. So just for those of the people that are, are practicing and stuff, if you feel them pull back, then sometimes it's the egos come in. Okay. So I'm going to just answer that question about, um, satan and the devil and oh yes welcome i'm saint germain we would say ah what an excellent question this is an excellent question there are many on the planet that um are hmm afraid afraid of the dark and we would say the dark is light that has, that has forgotten it is love the dark is light that has forgotten it is love you are all energy the dark comes from the light uh, when you say the terminology devil we see it as the ego consciousness it is the fears the fears is what the devil is it is the fear-based energy and that is what you would channel and that was what it, that is what you will create in your reality if you begin to channel at a fear you will create fear-based entities and this is because you can only channel from where you're vibrating at if you're vibrating in, in fear you will begin to create that in your reality simply by a snowball effect you will begin channeling in the ego consciousness you will connect with everyone on the planet who has a fear of the devil or of a lower entity and you will begin to channel in that and it will become bigger and bigger until you are so scared you will not want to channel again ah change it up change it to i will not have fear i will go to channel and if i feel fears arising i will allow them to come to the surface and i will transmute them back to love but i will not let them run my life i will not go into the ego consciousness to channel i will channel the truth from my heart and i will not see the devil as something scary but instead see it as darkness that has forgotten it is light all that is required is to love the dark and it will transmute back to light instantly. It is on the same scale. At the end of love is hate. At the end of dark is light. At the end of yes is no. Everything is a polarity on planet Earth. And if you're playing the game of the polarities, it must be at one of those ends. Go in the middle and you will not channel anything fearful. You will not channel anything with judgment it would be without judgment it would be without uh, without fear ah oh, change your change your perception ah oh. thank you tom you have anything else i don't think so i think uh it was a great opportunity to have this kind of experience for our audience and for us and uh very cool insights you know and I think it's going to be very helpful to everyone that's been listening if they take it to heart and take the time and learn their truth, so to speak, right? Yes. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Well, Tara, let's um, make sure that people have, you know, your contact information. If they wanted, if they saw what happened here or listened to what happened, and they go, you know what, I, I really don't need to get hold of that Tara Arnold. I think this is going to be something that resonates with me. How do they, how do they get a hold of you? What's the best way? Um, so I'm on YouTube. So Tara Arnold is my YouTube channel name. And it's T-A-R-A-A-R-N-O-L-D. And then my website is TaraArnoldArt.com. And so that's, uh, you can find me there and check out my services. Um, I also have live events. So if anybody's interested in those, those are on my website. You do your live events in the United States or is it strictly Canada? On Zoom, yeah, over Zoom. Zoom, so everywhere. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. 
Gotcha. So anything else uh, you want to leave people with? I mean, a message of uh, encouragement or whatnot? Okay. I'm just, I'll just go into transfer it. Okay. Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We would say to recognize your greatness. Uh, many of you are walking into a room and you are walking into a room and lowering your vibration to match those in the room. Ah, what happens when I walk into a room and I lower my vibration to match theirs? This keeps me in victim. This keeps me small. We would say instead, ground yourself, pull your consciousness in and expand it out and walk in with your greatness. No longer lower your vibration to match those in the room to please them so that you'll know you're loved. This is you seeking love outside of yourself. When you lower your vibration to match everyone in the room, you keep yourself small and this is not helping anyone. If you wish to be in service, we would say to walk in with your greatness and offer that. Everyone in the room can begin downloading from your consciousness. It can begin downloading because you have expanded your consciousness into a higher vibration that they can receive in order to receive healing. It is not up to how you give the healing it is how they receive it and many of you are wanting to be healers but yet you are still pleasing those outside of yourself you're walking into a room and making yourself small instead make yourself big and see everyone as empathetic instead of sympathetic if you are seeing them as they are victims ah i am going into this room and there are people here that are hurt they have had a difficult time they've had heartbreaks or they've had injuries or illnesses and i am seeing them as a victim then i will keep them in victim if you see them as empathetic then you if you see them in the eyes of empathy then you will offer that frequency to them but if you see them in the eyes of sympathetic then you lower your vibration to match theirs and you keep them victim by offering the frequency of victim if you see a war on the other side of the world and you feel sorry for them then it keeps them victim because you are offering them the vibration that they're already vibrating in you cannot solve a problem in the vibration that you created it in create it in a different vibration walk in knowing your greatness or when you are Asking for help for a war on the other side of the world, expand your consciousness out and offer them empathy, meaning that you can stand in their shoes and send them love from your heart. But if you're sympathetic, you're saying you are a victim and I want to help you so bad, so I will take on your pain. And this is causing not only you pain, but them pain because it keeps both of you in victim. Be empathetic, not sympathetic. Stand in your shoes and say, I empathize and I will send love from my heart, but I will not take on your pain because I'm not seeing you as a victim. You're not victims of suffering. You're all warriors of experience. And it is be time to begin to show that to the world. And this is how you would change the world. This is how you heal people. When you stand in your truth, when you stand in your greatness, that is offered to everyone. They can choose to download it or they can refuse it. It is always up to them. It is not never how you give it. Ah, know your greatness. It is time to step up to your truth. Very uh, right. Well, extend our thanks to St. Germain and everyone else. We appreciate that. Okay, That's, well, thank excellent. you. Thank you for having me, and it was Absolutely. nice meeting both of you. Yeah, this was, and I'll just say, you know, for everybody here at the Metaphysical Mysteries, uh, we really appreciate you, you know, taking time to listen or, or view. Uh, most of you listen. And uh, Tara Arnold has been our guest today, and she is a channeler extraordinaire. And uh, if you're interested, we will have all her information on the website at themetaphysicalmysteries.com. And for all of us here, we wish everybody a great day and uh, step into your greatness. I love that. All right. Talk to you all later.